Hello and welcome to the Addicted Gamer. This is episode one of what I hope is a long series of video podcasts. In the past, I was very, very, um, I, I would say an avid video gamer to the point where back in 04, I started a podcast called The Addicted Gamer. I ran for maybe 10 or 12 or actually 20 episodes, one of which I just released recently, but it was only after having a hiatus of quite a long time. There were some things in my life that actually came about that stopped me from producing the podcast for quite a while. Um, and well, lo and behold, I moved away from gaming for a little bit, got through the hard times in my life. and. Uh, Currently, I'm in a wonderful place and I'm back to playing the games I love. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my history in gaming, which if those of you who had heard the podcast in the past, thank you for tuning in. Um, unfortunately, I lost all of them, so most of the new people are not privy to what I have done in the past. So, I was a big gamer long before people started having PCs in their houses. In fact, I was part of the era when only geeks had computers. Geeks like those three guys in the corner and in the movie uh, 16 Candles. You know, the ones that were so excited to have floppy disks and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember the five and a quarters and the three and a halves and, you know, when CDs came around, um, it was hard because I had hundreds of games on floppy disk so things for me changed rather quickly but the first real game that I got addicted to was a game called Elite it was a space sim it was open-ended it was a universe and you could pretty much do anything in it you could be um, fighting for justice like uh, for the police or military I think you could move freight which proved to be very lucrative as you made more and more money you'd buy new ships and believe it or not you could also be a pirate. So you had all these things. And there was an underlying theme to the game and missions if you read like the boards and stuff. But it really was just open-ended. And then in 1990, Chris Roberts released Wing Commander. And Wing Commander changed it all for a lot of people, but not for me, because I was using an Amiga. Yeah, I always seem to be on a computer that's the other platform. Like right now, I'm, an, I'm a Mac user. But I waited and waited, and eventually Wing Commander came out on the um, Amiga. And I had an Amiga 1200, and I had to get the one with the older graphics set, even though AGA was now the newer graphics. And uh, I played through the game and absolutely fell for it. Um, about the time Wing Commander came out for the Mac, I'm sorry, for the Amiga, the um, update to Wing Commander, I should say the sequel, Wing Commander 2 um, came out and it was only going to be a PC game because at that point Commodore had called it quits and they were going out of business. And I looked at the platforms because I'm really big into photography and video editing and I was like, well, Apple looks best, but it was also about the time that Apple was starting to unseat Steve Jobs and it didn't look like Apple was going to go on. So I convinced my father-in-law to go to a computer show at the Nassau Coliseum. I put together my first PC, um, bought a monitor um, there, and pretty much put together a 386DX40 with like a 128 megabyte graphic card, I think it was, or maybe even less than that. I can't tell you. It was probably a 16 meg card or maybe an 8 meg card. God, I might not even have any of those numbers right because it was so long ago. And I bought it solely for Wing Commander 2. And this genre just totally had me sold. And it was because when Wing Commander came out, the games were more like Elite. There weren't any of these rich stories with cutscenes and branching missions that really mattered. And if there were, I didn't find games like that. Wing Commander changed that. It was a very theatrical presentation, more like a movie that you were taking part in, but that your actions actually moved the game along its, um, l along in its way. Unlike other games that seemed to be like a Disney um, ride that was on rails, you know? So 
It wasn't theme park driven, though it kind of was, but every mission you had affected what the next mission you were going to have was, or just ended. And even the endings were quite theatrical. It wasn't just bang, you're dead. It was a whole scene with this 21-gun salute out on the outside of the hangar deck as they let your body float into the, um, into the distance of, ah, uh, whatever, into deep space. Well, time went on and Wing Commander evolved from this 2D sprite-based game which was state-of-the-art and it was gorgeous and if you're watching me play this game it was wonderful. And it evolved from this into more of a 3D game which you won't see here. Um, and that 3D game was called Wing Commander 3 and I think it was the first one that was on CD because it had hours upon hours of actual video cutscenes starring the likes of John Rice davies and Malcolm McDowell and of course Luke Skywalker, I mean Mark Hamill. And you know there were other people in it too and it, it just, it, it, it changed the way that movies were being played. In between all this, Chris Roberts took what was Wing Commander and what was Elite, so that open-ended, do-anything game, but still have a storyline in it, and merged them together and created Privateer. And although Wing Commander changed my love of games to be something that was more of a theatrical um, type of game, Privateer totally won me over because it, it had those elements in it, and plus also the elements of being able to do whatever I wanted. So I played these games along with others and one day I picked up a game that I didn't even think that I was gonna like, but it was Chris Roberts so it had to. And I, I went to school for aeronautics. I'm also a pilot. I got my pilot's license in 1995 and I got this game, it was called Strike Commander. So back up the timeline from instead of far in the future where we're fighting cats to essentially the timeline was today but back then it was 20 years in the future and uh, it was following this mercenary group that had F-16s along that were fighting for justice and freedom and you know to, to make things right for different communities around the world and the name of the of the actual game was Strike Commander. And again, it was a captivating game and it had all these elements that really drew me in. And a game that I played over and over again, of course. But one day when I was playing the game, I was looking at it and going, what if you weren't just this 2D character on screen? What if you were actually a 3D character that was able to interact with other people? and walk around the ship, walk around, well not the ship, walk around your base and walk into your own tent. But technology just didn't allow that to happen back then. This was probably the best that you were gonna get and it was by far better than almost anything else out there. And that includes the likes of X-Wing and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and TIE Fighter and all these games that LucasArts was throwing at you which were incredible games. I mean, I think before the um, Wing Commander game, I was playing Battlehawks, and that was a great game um, where you were flying in a fighter back in um, back in the Battle of Britain or um, the early days of the war in the Pacific. And um, they were two different games, of course, um, that I'm talking about. But it was just an amazing game that he brought forth. And then, of course, um, LucasArts brought in the Star Wars series of games, which are too many to um, actually talk about right now, but they were very, very um, enticing and engaging also, but they lacked the, um, the draw that the Wing Commander series brought to it. So Wing Commander went on for five, I think, in the series. And what you're watching right now is actually I, I bought Wing Commander and Wing Commander 2 on good old games, um, which is GOG.com. And it's there for the Mac and the PC. And this is the Mac version. It's wonderful. And uh, it, it, it went on for quite a while. I mean, I think the fifth one wasn't done by Chris. It might have been done by his brother, but I'll have to look that up. But they just were great games and very engaging. And uh, 
96, Chris Roberts left um, and started his own company. So he left Origin, which is now just a name that um, I guess EA uses for a launcher or a store to purchase your games on. And he went and started a company called Digital Anvil. And I don't know how to say this, but I was excited at the time. But when I look back on it now, that was probably what did in um, Chris Roberts' games because he is a genius, and uh, every genius has you know times when the game gets old or, or you don't have a very big, um, exciting new one that comes out. But under the publishing of Microsoft, there was a game released, and its name was Star Lancer, and although it had this dark storyline kind of along the lines of Battlestar Galactica. It's grim, it's uh, bleak, and you have to run away to try to fight back. Um, it didn't really... Um, it didn't really do for me the same thing that Wing Commander did. But I still liked the game a lot. Graphics were good. Um, it gave me an opportunity to play a female character for the first time in the series, I think. Yeah, I think that was it, because you're always playing um, old blue hair, as you see in this, or uh, Mark Hamill's character in the other one. Yeah, I think that might have been the first one, and uh, it was actually pretty good. And then the successor to Privateer came out, and it was called Freelancer. And Freelancer was the first one I actually partook in the multiplayer, and everything that Privateer 1 was, Freelancer was. Great, rich storyline. Do anything that you want. Go on the multiplayer servers. and it, I, I can't say enough. It was a great, great... Oh my god, look at that ship. It's totally beat up. Sorry. It was totally a great, great, great game. And uh, it's still on my hard drive. And as I talk more about the future game that I'm about ready to spill on y'all... Um, I'll probably have some Freelancer um, videos up here. So I played Freelancer for quite a bit and loved it. And then Chris Roberts went away um, for 10 years. And so did I. I left the whole space sim genre, even though I tried to play it in EVE Online and just got totally lost in spreadsheets as my eyes fell out on the desk rolling around and attempted to play Star Wars Galaxies years ago and Jump to Lightspeed came out, but just left wanting more and not enough. Multiplayer ships in that game were amazing, but I just wanted more. And then, of course, I uh, tried the new Star Wars, The Old Republic, but it's just not there. And although the X um, from Beyond the Frontier to X3, Albion, Prelude, um, and whatever they're going to come out now are wonderful games. They weren't just as captivating. So I fell into the MMORPG and I played Lord of the Rings, I played EverQuest, EverQuest 2. Wound up on WoW because I have tons of friends there and I'm not going to knock the genre. I love it. But it never really captured me the same way that these games did. At the same time, I love games that make you think. So I play a lot of Civ, always had. Whatever Sid Meier made, I bought and I loved. Um, favorite one of his games that I played, my favorite game of his, was actually um, Alpha Centauri. It was amazing. And, uh, well, you know, I just played all these different games. Well, recently I was on Steam because I have a Steam account for my civilization and I saw a game come up. My son and I were sitting in front of the computer and we downloaded a game called Kerbal Space Program. Great game. And that I'm not gonna knock. It's it's different. It's like a giant erector set or a Lego where the things that you make could actually go boom. It's essentially a real world physics engine and rockets that you build out of parts and you get them from Kerbal, which aka Earth, but in this case it's you know it's uh, inhabited by little Muppets, and you launch them to the moon or to what they're. Uh, calling Duna, but is Mars and all these other planets that they have. And it was good. But I had to learn how to play the game because it has a learning curve in it. 
and I started looking at some YouTube videos and settled on one from a gentleman named Scott Manley. And I watched the, a lot of videos and learned a lot in the game and actually got quite good at the game. I've only had it for about seven weeks now. But on the 23rd, he released one video that totally blew me away. I didn't know what it was talking about. It said before Star Citizen Chris Roberts or something like that. I got to look at the name of it. But if you look at Scott Manley's September 23rd video, it essentially goes through what I'm going through here, showing you all of this wonderful Wing Commander 1 footage. And it just alludes to Star Citizen and I didn't know what it was. Well, a week later, I finally look it up after watching the video again. And oh my God. My prayers have been answered. And I think what I can say is for those of you who haven't gone over to robertspaceindustries.com or looked up Star Citizen and love the space sim, you need to. And with that said, I'm going to let this game play out and I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to come back with some shots from Freelancer, I hope. And then I'm going to show you a little bit about this wonderful game called Star Citizen that is not out now, won't be for a long time, but you can get in and back it. So thank you very much for listening to me ramble on. Have fun watching the very end of this video and I'll talk to y'all soon. Thank <laughs> you.